Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairs. Uh, I appreciate the invitation to talk about the subject, uh, which uh, personally uh, I don't uh, do a lot of uh, robotic hernia repair, but as the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Medical Robotics, I published some of the papers, so I'm going to really focus on reviewing the evidence at this point and where I think uh, this is going to uh, uh, be appropriate. Uh, my disclosure slides, uh, there is nothing in the relationship I have which affect the talk I'm going to give. As I said, my goal is to review the current evidence uh, in uh, ventral hernia, inguinal hernia, complex hernias, and a little bit parasophageal purely because that's a procedure that I've done robotically and uh, with the view be specifically because I was interested in telesurgery and doing this, performing this on patients at a remotely rather than necessarily in, in a hospital. And uh, the question, is robotic hernia repair uh, something that should be done routinely? Um, there's no doubt that the worldwide uh, trend in application of robotics is, is increasing and it continues to grow at the rate of uh, over uh, in double digits. Um, and certainly even in general surgery, there is a growth in, 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 in robotic application in general surgery. And when you look around, there is an increasing use of robotics for hernia repair, and yet, there are very few publications on that. Uh, I, I know for a fact in visiting a number of centers that they do robotic hernia, but when you look at literature, uh, there are very few publications, which uh, concerns me as, as an editor of a journal, why people are not willing to put uh, their, their outcomes in paper and, and report this. Um, ventral hernia uh, is obviously one of the ones which is, uh, there is some attraction towards use of the ro robot, it's, uh, in, in North America, there's about a million hernia surgery being done every year, of which uh, about 350 are ventral hernia, 600 are, uh, are uh, uh, 1,000 are uh, inguinal hernia, and a whole splattering of other procedures. So it's a huge market, and you can see if Intuitive can get even 5% of, uh, uh, of, or any of the robots can get 5% of the market. It's quite a number. But again, ventral hernia, the interesting here is that still majority are being done open, some of you attended the earlier session on ventral hernia, and everybody looks at ventral hernia and thinks they're just complex as you were, the pictures you were seeing. But majority are not that large and can be done either by open or laparoscopic quite successfully. The majority are still being done by open technique, even in, in university centers. So we still have a long way to go in, in penetration, minimally invasive approaches in, in ventral hernia repair. And there are good reasons why that hasn't. And again, robotics still plays a, a, a small role in all of this. Again, I'm not going to spend much time talking about pros and cons of robotics, but the con is obviously still the papers that have been published in general have increased OR time as, ex as, as in, in the other procedure, increased costs, and, and the training required. And I think that those are still pretty big cons when it comes to hernia repair. Uh, as far as MIS ventral hernia repair, the laparoscopic approach, the tension-free mesh repair, has been well documented, and extremely successful. There are, however, a number of uh, uh, downsides to it. One is obviously the transmural sutures are associated with pain, and anything which you can avoid those transmural sutures will uh, improve patient pain. Anything which reduces the size of the, uh, the mesh itself may actually also be a, 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 an advantage because it reduces mesh erosion, mesh complication, uh, as well as uh, obviously uh, seromas, et cetera. Uh, one of the approaches that uh, has been tried laparoscopically with some limited success was to reduce the size of the hernia defect and the hernia sac, but that requires intercorporeal suturing and the angulation for laparoscopic approach is very, very difficult. Uh, robotic, however, that actually becomes a lot easier. And so ventral hernia repair with primary closure of the defect or at least uh, application of the, uh, the sac and defect to minimize it, to minimize the size of hernia, has been one approach which has been suggested and certainly one which has been um, used by those surgeons who routinely do ventral hernia with robotic. And this is probably one of the better papers out there by Gonzalez, uh, published by, by our journal last year, uh, looking at, at patients which, who had a primary closure versus non-primary closure and showing that uh, there was definitely reduction in, in, in recurrence uh, and, and uh, uh, complication rate was similar, but the, rec the reduction in recurrence were quite significant. And again, this is still um, pretty uh, 
at best a level three evidence. There are no good level one or level two evidence, which is something we really need to see before we can uh, change. It's a lot. It does take an average longer. I've actually seen one of these done in real time in in Miami uh, by a good friend of mine, Dr. Pereira, uh, a very skilled robotic guy. It took him almost three and a half hours to com do this. So it's not something which is done quickly, and uh, but if done well, it, it is a good operation. So. Uh, it's difficult to justify it. I have personally not done enough because I can't do it, but I can't justify it. But in a center which relies on patients coming to them because they offer a wide range of robotic procedures, they're doing them. And they, 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 they do a reasonably good job. And this is certainly a good technique. Robotic assisted ingrown hernia, in, uh, hernia surgery, again, is even rarer publication, although I know more a lot of s centers do offer it and they do performing. If you go Google... Uh, Ingle hernia robotic, you see a lot of people's advertising on the web, and yet there are very few publications. Most are actually from urologists uh, who are doing that as part of the prostatectomy, and they do a hernia repair when they find, or often a general surgeon who inserts the port for the urologist doing them, <laughs> and a mixture of that. So um, one of the better papers, actually, on this was uh, presented at Sages as a poster in 2011, but never has been published, and again, uh, by Chang et al. from uh, San Francisco VA. Uh, they, they, they compared uh, patients uh, using laparoscopic and, and uh, robotic. They found really no difference between the group, and that's probably why it was never published, except the fact that it was about 1,400 more cost towards to do the robotic procedure, but not much, uh, and a more OR time. Um, so there's really been a, a, a very few studies which have looked this, and I can't present this. Uh, there are a few case presentation of uh, a giant incarcerated inguinal hernias, such as this one by uh, Citrullo, where the whole bladder and ureters were in, in the in the scrotum. And again, you can see these in these complex cases, the robotics can uh, uh, bring an added value in dissecting and bringing the bladder out and, uh, and bringing the ureter. So in, in complex cases such as this, you, I, I personally can see some of those values, but these are extremely rare incidences that you see such a huge uh, uh, hernias, uh, complex hernias in which uh, um, robotic can play a role. Um, just going back to that, actually, another area which uh, I did not include is, is some of the parastomal hernias. Again, that's one where robotic can plicate the sac near the parastomal, reduce that, and, 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 and suture a mesh around. And again, in parastomal hernias, uh, you can see uh, some benefit in, in certain instances. Uh, robotic assisted hydro hernia repairs, they, they've been done since, uh, I would say, about year 2000. This is nothing new. It's a small group of hernias. Uh, certainly, uh, you can do it laparoscopic or robotically. Uh, if you're suturing the mesh, uh, certainly the robotic is a lot more easier and more elegant. But nowadays, with some of these uh, superficial tackers and new stuff, it's a lot quicker just to do it laparoscopic than, and then robotic. Uh, so while I've done some of these, I, I, I increasingly doing these laparoscopically. As far as looking comparison, um, again, there is very little to suggest that uh, robotic is, uh, uh, adds any value. Slightly longer time, uh, same uh, intraoperative blood loss, uh, uh, really, and uh, length of stays which are equal, and there's no added value except slightly uh, more cost because of it. So um, in conclusion, um, robotic assisted hernia repair is safe, feasible, and effective. Um, um, even though we don't have level one and level two evidence, I think it's fair to say that there has been no major studies which show that they're inferior as far as the quality of the surgery. And in, in some cases, in particularly more complex hernias, in, in it may actually add a value. Um, as far as the cost, it is clearly more costly because of the extra OR time and the equipment, et cetera. And so it's often difficult to justify this in most environments, particularly across Americas, uh, in Canada, in South America, Central America, where you actually people have to justify this. I do think that in future, more cost-effective systems may be an answer, and it's something that we all as surgeons look forward to, increasing the number of robotic systems in the market which can allow you to have reusable instrumentation. And certainly in this meeting, it's quite exciting to actually see at least two systems, um, new systems on the market. 
and I'm sure both are going to be looking at hernia as one of the possible um, uh, the sport system by Titan Medical and uh, uh, Transenterics actually uh, uh, not just Alphex but uh, uh, single port uh, often uh, is likely to look at hernia as one of the operations they're going to choose as well as obviously DLR, Microsurge, uh, the, the German company. So um, I'm not sure that these would necessarily make the procedures safe, uh, cheaper but it'd be interesting to see if this makes it more accessible to for, for, for most of us to look at this as a pot viable. At this moment, I would say in my practice, uh, robotic hernia surgery is, is not something that I would uh, uh, devote my uh, institutional resources to. There are other procedures. Thank you very much. But to say that the future of robotic is, 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 is great and I hope that we'll see increasing number of variety on the market. Thank you very much.